Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at my go-to sourdough recipe. Um, I know it can be a bit confusing sometimes when you're starting out on this journey, but I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible for you guys and hopefully you'll get something from it. Enjoy! Right, so we're going to start by adding in 560 grams of water to our mixer bowl. We're going to follow that up with 680 grams of strong white bread flour and also 80 grams of rye flour. Now we're going to mix this together. This is called an auto lease and basically you're hydrating the flour. Once that's mixed, leave it for about an hour. After one hour, add in 150 grams of active starter and then mix that into the dough. Once that's all incorporated, we can go ahead and add in 18 grams of sea salt. We need to mix this together for about five to six minutes. And then we're going to chuck in 50 grams of mixed seeds. Go ahead and knead this again for about five to six minutes on the machine. You'll see it all come together into a kind of cohesive dough. It's looking really good now. So it's been about 12 minutes total mixing at the moment. I'm just going to do a window pane test to see where the dough's at. As you can see, I'm pulling it apart with my fingers and the dough is tearing, so it's not ready. It needs more mixing. After another four minutes, I'll give it another test. And as you can see, this time the dough isn't tearing. It's really strong. And this is perfect. It's ready to go. I'm going to dump that out of the bowl and into a plastic container. And this is where I'm going to start my bulk fermentation. I'll do my first stretch and fold straight away. Really simple, wet your hands, this stops the dough sticking and just pull the dough towards you and then flick it over itself. Really simple, three or four times. Then bring the dough up, let it fall naturally underneath and kind of grab it together inside the container. Perfect, get the lid on and we're gonna leave that for an hour. Right, after one hour, we're going to do our second stretch and fold, and you can see the dough's looking slightly different, shinier, and it's got a slight little air bubbles in it. Again, flick the dough over, pull it up, let it hang down naturally, and then tuck it all in. Again, we're going to leave this for one hour. This is the third and final stretch and fold now. Again, you can see the dough is looking puffed up. You can see some air bubbles in the top. And when you feel it, you can kind of feel it's really strong, stretchy. Again, let the dough hang down and then we'll tuck it all in. And then we're going to put the lid on this and we're going to leave it for about two hours now. And that will be the end of the bulk fermentation. All the little air bubbles you can see on the dough is a really, really good sign. So that's what you should be looking for. After two hours, I'm just going to dump the dough out of the plastic container. I don't know, something really satisfying about watching this. Then we're just going to divide it into two. This makes two 750 gram loaves. So just weighing it up there, 750 grams each, there or thereabouts. And then we're going to move on to the pre-shaping. So all divided up now and looking good. On to the pre-shape. As you see, I'm kind of pushing away with my bench scraper and then pulling it towards myself. This is all creating tension in the dough. You can see it coming up into a nice round ball. On to the next one. Again, you see how sticky it is to start with. I'm just going to lightly wet my hand, push with my bench scraper and pull with my hand as it comes back, creating tension underneath. Lovely. I'm going to dust heavily with flour on top and then I'm going to leave these for 30 minutes. On to shaping now. So I'm just going to really nicely flour my hands trying to make sure nothing sticks. Flip the dough over so the flour side is on the bottom. 
I'm going to pull it into a sort of rectangle shape. Fold a third of the way up with the bottom, stretch over, stretch again, stretch the top part towards you and then stitch along. As you can see, it's getting really tight. Then I'm just going to roll that again, just using the work top to create some tension. Then I'm going to pinch the ends to seal them. These are going to go straight into my banneton, which has been heavily dusted with rice flour. Rice flour is brilliant because it's got no gluten in it, so no chance of it sticking to your banneton. Great little tip there. So onto the second one, exactly the same. Flip it over, flour your hands. Then we're just going to get it into a rough rectangle shape. Fold a third of the way over, in one side, in the other. Top towards you. Stitch, stitch, lovely, and then roll that all up into a nice shape, seal the ends, and then into the banneton. And that's your two loaves shaped up. These are going to rest on the side of the counter for about 20 minutes, and then they're going to go in the fridge, and they're going to get baked in the morning. Right, on to the next day, and these have been in the fridge for 12 hours. You can see how they're kind of puffed up, which is a really good sign that there's loads of gas and air inside. Gently tip it out onto a greaseproof lined pizza paddle. And then we're going to score with our alarm at a 45 degree angle, just off centre, all the way from the front to the back. You'll see it opening up like that, and that's perfect. Then I'm going to go ahead with this trigger bottle and spray water all over the top of the dough. This will stop the crust from setting too early. This will get loaded into the oven 230 degrees on my open bake setup. Also just a quick tutorial of how I cook in a Dutch oven. Gently remove the dough from the banneton. I've got this nice little mat which helps get it in and out of the pan. I'm going to score with our alarm again, 45 degree angle from front to back, just off centre. Then we're going to gently lift the dough into the preheated pot. We're going to go ahead and spray that dough with water. That just helps get the steam going. Then we're going to bake that at 240 for 20 minutes, then remove the lid, bake for a further 20 minutes and you're done. I'm just going to quickly go through my open bake setup. So zero fan, just top and bottom heat, 230 degrees. I use my grill tray inverted. As you can see there at the top of the oven. Then I've got a pizza stone in the middle. And then I use a pan, which I pour boiling water in just before I shut the door when I load the dough. You're going to remove that top tray and the bottom pan with the, with the water in and then just continue to bake for about 10 minutes until you get the desired colour and this is the result. As you can see, nice big ear, really nice and puffed up, really good blisters on the side and now let's have a look at the crumb. And there we go. Nice and even holes, really nice and soft. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Follow for more content.